Harris talked me into leaving a perfectly good job on Wall Street, where I was a financial columnist in 1972, to come back home to Florida and join him at Florida Trend, and I did that and it pretty much changed my life. He had started the magazine in 1958. It had grown and was successful those years before I came aboard, but it was a great opportunity to do uh, a lot more with the magazine. When Harris sold the magazine, Florida Trend, to the Times Publishing Company, I came in as the new publisher of Florida Trend. And Harris was, uh, the first thing I should say about Harris, a true gentleman and he took me under his wings and he explained to me everything about the publishing world in a, a series of lunches over the first year of, of, of our ownership and, and working together with him. I was in the advertising business for a number of years and uh, we bought advertising in Florida Trend Magazine for our clients. He was a good guy in the community. I got to know him and we became friends. Harris Mullen was several things. As I've already said, he was a gentleman. But number two, he was an entrepreneur. He knew how to start and develop something from scratch. His family, as you may know, owned a magazine called Florida Grower and Rancher. And he decided at that time, in 1958, to start Florida Trend Magazine as a business magazine. He thought the future was more in business for the state of Florida than in agriculture. And he was right. You know, Harris did something quite unique. He created a magazine that connected all of the places in Florida that had never been connected before. If you were in Tampa, you didn't know what was going on in the business community in Miami. If you were in Miami, you didn't know what was going on in Jacksonville. What Harris could do was see the future. The very first edition of Florida Trend in April of 1958 had a rocket ship taking off from Cape Canaveral. Who could have imagined that just a decade later, Americans would be landing a man on the moon and that rocket would have taken off from Cape Canaveral? It was a first, and it enlightened a lot of people's eyes who didn't realize, first of all, how big and expansive Florida was, how active the business community was. It was a great connector. He was not afraid to speak truth to powerful people, regulators, politicians, and elected officials of all kinds. And from time to time, that was called on. That was called for, and he did it. But he also had a great, uh, a great sense of dry humor. And then he went into Ybor City and became a pioneer. And he bought the uh, Ybor Square building, which at the time was a huge gamble because Ybor City had not become uh, redeveloped at that point. Well, I think a lot of folks may know that he was very interested in history and also the Civil War. So after his career in journalism and after he sold the magazine to the Times Publishing Company, he went on to write at least two books about the Civil War. He was really an important person in the history of Florida. He did a lot of things that changed Florida for the better. And he did a lot of things that changed Tampa for the better. So uh, I think he's a, he's a perfect candidate for the Hall of Fame. And I applaud the fact that uh, Harris is being inducted into the Tampa Bay Business Hall of Fame this year. Congratulations. This is an honor and it's well, well deserved. So congratulations to Harris and to his entire family for this honor.